Singapore Management University will incorporate mental health into its curriculum for the first time. It's launched a new framework to raise mental health literacy and it covers six aspects, including the physical, emotional and financial. Now, the university is also beefing up its network of social and emotional support for students. Avenues like community service and work-study opportunities will also be expanded to help students learn self-coping skills that are equally relevant outside school. So let's get more insight. We have with us uh, sociology professor Pauline Strawn from the Singapore Management University. Uh, Prof, it must have been uh, some survey because the results actually uh, form the framework of this curriculum. Well, thank you so much for having me. And indeed, this is something that we wanted to do for our students. Our primary concern is with mental well-being but that is very much dependent on the other aspects of the individual's life. So feedback from our students through our survey highlight concerns which span across multiple dimensions. They're worried about academic and co-curricular commitments, for example, their physical health, their emotional health, employability. So the survey data reinforces the importance of approaching overall student wellness proactively through developing the trait and skill of resilience, right? The ability to spring back quickly when faced with adversities. So our framework aims to build resilience in our students through the six interrelated dimensions you, meant, you mentioned, uh, physical, intellectual, social, emotional, career, and financial. It is a very robust framework. So the dimensions can be modified to adapt to emerging conditions. Professor, while this was being put together, was it determined perhaps, in, is there some sort of metric for how resilient our students are at the moment? And are there any aspects of it that they perhaps lack in particular that could, you know, hurt them uh, when it comes to leaving school and sort of venturing out into the world? Mm. Well, you know, looking after the mental well-being of our students is, is something that is very challenging. Right? We, know, we wish we know the answer because their well-being is so important to us. Um, but through extensive literature review, we arrived at this construct of resilience, right? We think that resilience is a very appropriate trait to improve in our students. So we have, we have an index, uh, a quantitative index. We validated an index which we use to measure the level of resilience in our students. And our students are okay. Um, they score above average. And, um, you know, I think... It, it, your, your, your second question about, you know, whether or not they're prepared, you know, for life after school. Now, that's an important consideration because universities and schools, we tend to cocoon our students in relatively safe environments. So certainly real world ex experiences while they're still in a university is so important and it will serve to better prepare them for full time employment. So we, we try to provide these to the best of our ability through work-study programs, for example, internships, community service engagements, uh, as well as special modules. Like at, at SMU, we have SMU X courses, which are interdisciplinary, and they emphasize experiential learning through projects aimed at solving real issues faced by organizations. So we hope that as we induct them slowly right, into the real world, by the time they graduate and they leave us, they will be much better prepared. And, and Professor Strawn, you, you said that the, the framework can be tweaked. Uh, so can it be tweaked enough such that it's uh, applicable to a wider audience, a wider community like healthcare workers, for example? The resilience framework that um, we have launched aims to build resilience through empowering agency through education, encouragement, and experiences. And it is robust enough, sufficiently robust, and can be adapted, uh, I believe, to any population. So our frontline heroes, and this is a good time for me to you know, tell those who are watching, thank you so much right, for keeping us safe. We know that they are exhausted in this season. So it's very important that they are, for example, if I apply the framework, right, to look after, you know, frontline workers, it is important that there should be educational materials to provide them with important information on how to protect their mental health, 
the importance of maintaining good physical health and nutrition and promoting social integration so that they can draw support from people around them. So we assume that people know these things, but when you're under siege, you, 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 tend, you have to be reminded, right, that there's help sources around you. But perhaps the most important aspect uh, from our framework is building strong community infrastructure to encourage our frontline heroes. So in these challenging times, it is absolutely critical to leverage community support, both in the workplace as well as in the larger community. So for example, um, within the workplace, to have safe spaces within hospitals for staff to retreat to in the midst of hectic schedules where they can chat quietly with counsellors or have a neck massage, right, to revive them, recharge on nutrition, or just, just be there for a few quiet moments to huddle with a friend. From the community's resources, what we can do is augment the stretch human resources needs wherever possible. So um, we could have volunteers who can be in the wards in a safe position to comfort patients so that doctors and nurses are free to deal with the more technical aspects of caregiving. Or we could have volunteers who can be trained to provide timely information to family with loved ones in the hospitals so that hospitals don't have to deal with anxious phone calls. And for our community to remind our frontline heroes that we know what a difficult time they're going through and that we appreciate them. And we know that their sacrifice, you know, keeps us safe. So that in itself would be an uplift, you know, for many of them. Yeah, thank you so much, Professor, for shedding some light on it and uh, sharing with us the many facets of, of mental health. Uh, Professor Pauline Strawn from the Singapore Management University.